The way that Usman Khan was just sort of fishing for his life out there, it was really tough to watch. That's probably where I started to see the red flags coming in, especially when Rizwan was not helping out from the other end. He wasn't really capitalizing. He wasn't taking the charge. And when Mohamed Rizwan decided to take the charge, it was against Jaspreet Bhumra. Now let's talk about Mohamed Rizwan, Bashar. What did he do in this match today? Rizwan today, uh, in Pakistan's inning, he scored 31 runs of 44 balls. That included 1-4, one, 1-6. One, uh, so essentially, if you look at it, he scored about 21 runs of 42 deliveries. Which, I mean, if you take his four and his six out, you know. 14 um, dots, I think, in the innings too. Lots of dots. Lots of dots. And just in innings that really did not go anywhere. There were some glimpses of intent. Uh, he took some risks. But I think... The turning point and one of the biggest culprits of this match is indeed Muhammad Rizwan. In the 15th over, Rohit Sharma brings on Jaspreet Bumrah. And everybody knows. I'm on the couch, live streaming. You can hear me. And I say, Rohit has brought Bumrah because he wants a wicket here. This game will likely not go till the last over unless India takes wickets. And what does Rizwan do? Rizwan tries to... Play a cross bat, lap shot, heave, I don't even know what to call that. And he gets bold on a pitch where the ball is doing a lot. Some balls are staying low, some are kicking off. The best way to play is with a straight bat within the V. Rizwan, in a critical moment of the match, goes cross bat, gets bold. And that was one of the most turning points of this entire match. Before that, uh, Pakistan in 14 overs were 80 for three, and they needed, uh, what, 30? 30 odd runs? Yeah, 40 runs in about 48. Yeah. They needed 40, 40 runs from 42 deliveries at that point. And uh, they couldn't make it. As the stream went through, I just kept saying, like, this is going to take a massive bottle job from Pakistan to lose the match from here. Because at, at the same time, I, I, I never felt fully comfortable throughout the whole chase. Because I, I knew a wicket here, a wicket there, dots, dot, dot balls here, dot balls there. And this game could turn on its head anytime. So these are the amounts of dot balls that every bowler bowled. Ready, Bashar? In the Indian line. Arshdi bowled 11 dots. Mohammad Siraj bowled 11 dots. Jaspreet Bhumra bowled 15 dots. Pandya bowled 11 dots. Ravinder Jadeja bowled 5. And Akshay Patel bowled 6. So if you add those together, those two together, they bowled 11 together. Uh, I think I actually did some math before the podcast and I was just checking. So I think India played about 63 dots from Pakistan. And Pakistan played about 50 odd. So the difference actually was not the dot balls. The difference was the boundaries. India hit 13 fours and two sixes. Pakistan hit 8 fours and two sixes. That includes the two boundaries from Naseem Shah in the last over. So I think uh, just a, a lack of intent. I really feel like Pakistan lost that match in the power play. Uh, had they gotten a bit, had shown more intent in the power play, had they been like 50 runs, 55 runs uh, for, two. for two wickets, like India was, it could have just made the game one-sided in the first power play. But again, Rizbar, they like to play the power play as they do. Uh, I think their average power play score is around, what, 40, 42. I would have taken that too, honestly. Yeah, on this pitch. like I said, on this pitch, these were like perfect conditions for Rizbar. But Rizwan, with the experience he has, with the matches he's played, he had to finish this match at Pakistan. And I think we also need to talk about how Rizwan, at the opener, he's an opener, he plays the new ball, but he does not have the technique to face the new ball. He got squared up the last match by Netra Volker. Today, he was squared up by Siraj multiple times. It just seems like he cannot play the moving ball. At the same time, he only wants to open. It's very funny. Both Baba Rizman, if you ask any one of them to play one down, they will go to the media and they will show how they're unhappy, how they're doing a massive favor on Pakistan. This is a team game. Mohamed Avi said that he understood when he came in for uh, coaching that Baba and Rizwan are not the full Pakistan team. You want to win tournaments? You want to win series? You have to win with whole team contribution from all 11 guys. But I think Balbar and Rizwan feel like they're, they're just, the, the, these two guys are just the Pakistan team. And they've designed the whole Pakistan batting order the past three, four years 
in such a way where Barber and Rizwan go, they play 12 overs, 15 overs, they hog up balls, run rate of seven, maybe eight. And then number three, four, five, six is just hitters. And when you have hitters, they play high risk cricket. How can you develop middle order batsmen when that's the style of play that they have to play? The situation is such where Azam Khan goes in, Iftikhar goes in, and they have to go from ball one because the required run rate is 10, 10, 11, 12. Speaking of middle order batsmen, we should talk about Iman Nassim in this game. 23 balls, 15 runs. He was on the pitch for 40 minutes. 1-4 and that two off the top edge. Off an edge. Totally unconvincing innings. And we thought because he played innings for Islamabad United in the PSL that he would, again, play the same innings here, take the game deep and finish it off. But again, this is not the PSL. This is, this is the real deal. This is a World Cup. And what's shocking is Mohamed Amr and Ahmad Basim were on TV last year during the ODI World Cup, and they were blasting the Pakistan team. They were blasting Babur's captaincy, the team performance. And if you look at it, actually, these two guys have an incredible part to play in Pakistan's last two defeats. Mohamed Amr balls, one of the worst super overs you've ever seen. Three wides, wides go for runs, and goes hit for a boundary. Super over goes for 18. Pakistan can't chase it. They lose the match. In this match, Imad Basim plays so many dot balls. The run rate keeps climbing. And I even have serious doubts on whether Imad Basim was even fit to begin with. He was struggling with the side strain. And the news around was that Mehran Mumtaz was being prepared in Pakistan to go to the US. Uh, that Imad Basim was being pushed to play through an injury. And we could see that by the way he was running in between the wickets. He just seemed like he was lethargic. He was tired, just did not want to put any effort. The hardest part of this entire game uh, was watching Imad bat and watching Imad run. I think Shadab made him run a two really, really hard. And after that, he took two balls just to be normal again, like just to get, catch his breath. And so number one toughest thing was Imad Vaseem. Number two was Osman Khan's batting. I think those two go hand in hand in one of the weirdest things that I've ever seen Fox and Cricket do. It was just a no-show innings from Imad Vaseem. I don't think moving him up the order over Shadab and Iftikhar was the right move. I think um, the clutch factor that Imad has for Islamabad, I think that's what sort of bumped him up the order. Or maybe because Fakhar was just out and they wanted to keep the right-left combination. I see intent in that decision. The execution, Imad Vaseem just shot the pants. Chat the pitch. There was just one over where he played against Aksha Patel. Again, oh my God. a non-regular bowler. He is a batting all-rounder. And just kept playing dot balls. Similar dot. He's it was a cut shot. Single shot single every single ball. He did the same thing with, uh, I think, Pandya or Bhumra as well. He did the same thing with them. Twice he did this. And he just could not get it off the bat. He was so lazy. He, uh, the ball was flying past him. Some were staying low. Some were staying high. And he just didn't know what to do. And it was, it was a nothing innings from him. A nothing innings. The majority of the reason that Pakistan ended up where they ended up was because of the 15 on, off 23. And, and like we lost by six runs. That, if that was even a hundred strike rate, which it should have been, Pakistan won two balls to spare. Speaking of middle order and flops, we have to have to talk about the hard and We've been talking about it in the past few podcasts, but I think there's been no bigger red flag, red flag than the, this game here. This man is in the team as a finisher and he is getting out on full tosses last match in the Super Over against USA. He is unable to put full tosses away this match. <clears throat> he is missing free hits. He's playing them dot balls and just not looking anywhere near a finisher. If anything, he has just finished his own career. I think this is the end of the Khan Ahmed. What do you think? What I think about Iftikhar Ahmed, he has played 98 matches for Pakistan. He has played four multi-nation tournaments. And perhaps his biggest achievement so far is his century against Nepal. And the 6 sixes against Babri. <laughs> seriously, seriously. That, that's his major accomplishment. He has two Man of the Match awards. And believe it or not, that's because of his bowling. He took a 5-4 against Zimbabwe. And then... Recently, he took like three, four wickets against New Zealand in New Zealand, the one match we won on that tour. He has not had any impactful innings that have won him 
a man of the match awards in his entire career. Who had the man of the match in, this, in that Nepal game? Oh, Babur did because he had 156 yeah. or something. Iftikhar Ahmed averages 19, striker of 118 in T20 World Cup for Pakistan. And these are stats of a finisher. What, what are you going to say? Nine balls, five runs. He was on the pitch for 14 minutes and he had no impact. The last three people, Imad, Shadab, and Iftikhar, before Shaheen and Asim came out to bat, their strike rates are 65, 57, and 55, respectively. 